How do rats work? We've been using rapid antigen tests for a long time. The pregnancy test you can buy from a chemist is a type of rapid antigen test that uses antibodies to detect pregnancy hormones. A COVID rapid antigen test also uses antibodies, but ones that detect bits of virus protein in your nose or throat. So how do they work? To understand how a rat works, first of all, you need to understand a bit about antibodies. Antibodies are a type of protein that sticks to other molecules. They are made in our bodies and in the bodies of many other animals. In our bodies, antibodies that stick to virus proteins can stop a virus from entering cells and will signal to the immune system to come and attack the virus. This picture shows antibodies sticking to a SARS-CoV-2 virus particle, the virus that causes COVID-19 disease. This is the sort of picture you often see showing an antibody binding to its antigen. The antibody is green and the antigen is purple. An antigen is just the piece of molecule that an antibody will bind to. Usually, it'll be a piece of protein. Antibodies are really picky. An effective antibody will only ever recognize and bind to one specifically shaped piece of antigen molecule. The parts of the antibody that the antigen binds to are called the variable regions. The rest of the antibody is called the constant region. It is the same in all of the antibodies made in all animals from a particular species. In real life, an antibody looks more like this. The antibody surfaces are very complex. Their shapes are in 3D and are very bumpy, and they have electrical charges too. The variable regions of an antibody are shaped so that they fit into the antigen very precisely, like 3D jigsaw puzzle pieces. This means that they won't bind to any other molecule. Some antibodies recognize and bind to the constant part of other antibodies. They will bind all the antibodies from not just one individual, but from a whole species. Now we know what antibodies are, how are they used in a rat? Inside the plastic cassette, there is a sheet of material similar to blotting paper with six zones, each with a different coating. Zone one, a piece of absorbent material that will soak up the drop of sample. Zone two, a patch with antibodies that can only bind to a SARS-CoV-2 protein. These antibodies have a color label stuck to their end and are free to move when they are wet. In this example, the color is pink. Zone three, some more absorbent material that the sample will soak through after it has passed through the first antibody patch. Zone four, a patch with more antibodies that will only bind to a SARS-CoV-2 protein. These are firmly attached by their constant ends and don't have any color label. This is the T or test strip. Zone five, another patch with antibodies also firmly attached. These antibodies only stick to the constant ends of the other antibodies. This is the C or control strip. Zone six, a piece of wicking material that draws the sample liquid along the device. Okay, get on with it. How does it work? In the test kit, there is a swab for collecting a sample from your nose and a tube. The tube contains a special buffer solution with detergent that breaks down virus particles and keeps the sample at the correct pH. As you probably know well by now, the person being tested rubs the swab on the inside of their nose and then puts the swab into the buffer in the tube. Any bits of mucus and virus that the swab picks up get washed off into the buffer in the tube. The buffer dilutes the mucus and the detergent in it dissolves the fatty membranes of any virus particles present, breaking them up so the virus proteins can float free. Drops of diluted buffered nasal mucus, along with any virus proteins that may be in it, are placed in the sample well. Inside the test cassette, the buffered mucus sample starts to soak through the absorbent material. The sample liquid moves towards the wicking material, carrying any viral proteins present with it. We say that it flows laterally or sideways. This is where the name lateral flow test comes from. The pink labeled antibodies move along in the liquid as it flows. If there are any virus proteins in the sample, the antibodies will stick to them and drag them along with them. The pink antibodies flow past the T-strip. If they carry virus proteins with them, they will stick to the antibodies attached to the T-strip and their color labels turn the T-strip pink. 
At the tea strip, the antibodies make a sort of sandwich with the virus protein as the filling and a pink label on top. The bottom is still firmly stuck to the tea strip. If there are no virus proteins, the pink antibodies flow past without sticking and the tea strip doesn't change color. The leftover pink antibodies keep flowing towards and over the sea strip. The antibodies attached to the sea strip will stick to any of the pink antibodies coming past. So if the test is working properly, the sea strip will turn pink. The antibodies stuck to the sea strip don't stick to any virus particles. They just stick to the constant part of the pink labeled antibodies. Of course, we can't see the antibodies or the virus particles. All we see are the label molecules making pink lines on the C or T strips. Sometimes things go wrong. If no color develops at C, something has gone wrong. It could be that the sample was too slimy to flow through the device, or the antibodies lost their shape, or it could be that the device itself was faulty. And some people make things go wrong on purpose. If you don't follow the instructions on the test, you will probably get a false reading. If the pH of the sample liquid is wrong, the pink labeled antibodies might stick to anything at all. Rapid antigen tests for pregnancy work in the same way as tests for SARS-CoV-2, but they use an antibody that sticks to human chorionic gonadotropin, a pregnancy hormone, at the T-strip, and they are set up to work best at the pH of urine. Rapid antigen tests for COVID-19 are not as accurate as PCR tests, but they are a lot quicker and cheaper, and you can do them at home. Written and illustrated by Bronwyn Carlyle, with help from Miriam Sharp. Narrated by Miriam Sharp. Music, Take It Easy by Luke Bergs, from SoundCloud. Made at the Department of Biochemistry at the University of Otago.